overcharge someone a billion dollars? God, I mean, I, I would look at that and go, hey, I think you overcharged me a billion dollars. Project Nessie is this pretty much this secret algorithm that it could raise prices on its site and then see if other platforms were going to raise their prices in, um, in conjunction with that. And it's just more and more sponsored results than ever before, before I get to the actual organic rankings. Amazon executives internally acknowledge that this creates harm to consumers by making it almost impossible for high quality, helpful organic content to win over barely relevant sponsored content. Right, Fucking it's everybody. terrible for the seller, terrible for the buyer, anyone using this platform. And then outside of that, it's, it's raising prices on other platforms. Sellers pay, shoppers get lower quality search results for higher priced products, only Amazon wins. Have you noticed that Amazon's search results are pretty terrible lately? Well, it's not just you, okay? In fact, the FTC is on to them in their little games, and they're trying to pull down their pants and spank their little bare booty for all the world to see just how much they're screwing you and me and grandma and grandpa and the whole freaking family just because we thought we were getting low prices, but it turns out that we weren't. And we're going to get right into that. And what else? And what else? I'll tell you what else. Scam Butman Fart is guilty. My man is getting locked up, dude. This guy's facing up to a 110 years in prison. My gosh. Yeah, and speaking of would crypto. Not, would not want to be SBF. No, right you don't want to be Scam Butman Fart right now. And that's now. not all with crypto, okay? Because yeah. we're, we're coming to you live, reporting on Board Ape Yacht Club party in Hong Kong. Everybody's eyeballs are getting burned off. What the heck is going on with that? Yeah, plus Elon Musk, King Elon Musk reveals Grok. Grok <laughs> is the new AI. Grok knows all. Grok is And a... get this, it's based and sarcastic. Yeah, it's based. It's sarcastic. It'll tell you things that might make a lefty squirm in his little underpants. Fuck. And not only that, Ben's giving us a little market update. Yeah, we got a little market update, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. tuned. Stay tuned. Hit the intro. Tune. I'd like to try to sell something to you. Do I look that bad? No. I feel like I look terrible. Why? Man. I just feel like I got sleepy eyes. I think we got a couple of cozy kings in the I studio. I think we got a couple of cozy kings. Welcome back to another episode, folks. We are live coming to you from Spotify Studios in New York City. Live, the, baby. The, the New if you're York watching is, this, it's live. If you're watching this, it's live right now. Anything can happen. Check out our newest episode of Ben and Emil on... Oh, that's a doozy. Pet Peeves. Pet Peeves. It's out now. The boys are steamed. The boys are steamed. We're really peed off. P-P-O'd. Peed off. We're P-O'd. We're peeved. We're peeved. Also, I'm back on Cameo. I totally forgot that I had one. And if you if you want to have me wish someone a happy birthday or a happy graduation... Well, it's not graduation season. Stupid! Well, actually, that's not true. Some people graduate uh, first semester. They Thank take you. an extra semester or you. Uh, they take summer classes and they have extra credits. So get those weird graduators in now. It's not all about um, dads and grads this year. Yeah. This year we're having, you're going home for Christmas, a college grad. Mm. And I, I'll, I'll say anything you want for a price. Well, except some things. Uh, yeah, I probably... <laughs> Unless it's like an explicit terrorist threat, in which case I'll do it for free. <laughs> nice. Well, let's dive right in, Should shall we? we? Yeah, I think so. There's I much to discuss. There's too much to discuss. As we all know, over 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 the last week, Sam Bankman freed. Sam Butman fraud. Sam Butman fart. Sam Butman fart. Scam Bankman fraud. Scam Butman fart. Uh Buttman, Buttman, Buttman. Buttman, 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 caught guilty, got consent, got convicted, guilty. Seven counts, stealing over $8 billion from FTX users, two counts of fraud and five counts of conspiracy. Uh, he used the funds, as we all know, to pay lenders, make shitty investments, make political donations for crypto legislation, 
and also just to, of course, pay himself and buy his de- his mommy and daddy a house and buy himself rugs. He liked rugs. My man going to jail. My man going to jail over rugs. Name a dumber thing to go over to jail over. Wait, can a vase? I? Vase? What? Uh, I want to. I want to share with you one of my favorite quotes. I actually posted it to um, posted it to Instagram stories. Is it about this? Is it about F- Sam Butman fart? Yeah. So he would actually. So he said, "I would never read a book. I don't want to say no book is ever worth reading, but Pre- actually, but I actually do believe something pretty close to that. If you wrote a book, you fucked up." And it should have been a six-paragraph blog post. That's it? That's the quote? Yeah, it's really beautiful. And I think maybe when he's mulling over these, uh, what is it, like 115 years he's, he's looking at? Yeah, well, that's... Maybe the, pick up a book from the library. That's the other thing. He won't get sentenced until, yeah, yeah, until March, March which <clears> is <throat> crazy. Also, the jury only deliberated for four hours. I Love mean, this that. whole thing was uh, lightning fast. I think when you, when you go around... Um, doing interviews about how you did the crime mm-hmm. uh, and, and the prosecution has a lot of evidence against you in that, in that form. Um, do you remember go a bit quickly? Yeah. Do you remember when he was there? There was a famous thing, I think right around the time when FTX collapsed, he was in a meeting with some venture capitalist guys, I think. And the guy, the venture capitalist realized at the end of the meeting that Sam had been playing League of Legends yes. the entire time mm-hmm. and attributed, I think he attributed it to, oh, he's just such a genius. Right. He can play League of Legends online while having a meeting. That's the thing. This whole thing was that, right? Like, oh, he doesn't read, bu- like he doesn't have time for that. If yeah. you want it, you better give it to him in a six paragraph blog post, yeah. all right? You fucked up if you wrote a book. Yeah. No, he he really just has, as we all have found out, he just has terrible ADD. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just can't focus. Right. Oh, boy. My guy's zooted up on Adderall. Oh, man. But, yeah, and he's going to be facing more trials to come. Yeah, bank fraud and uh, foreign bar- bribery. Election stuff. Yeah. Still no sentencing for Caroline Ellison, Gary Wong, and Nishad Singh. Very curious what's going to happen with that. Yeah, and the defense is, of course, saying that they are falsely implicating their client, Sam Butman Fart, in order to win leniency. Oh, he's going to appeal on this, too. Yeah, uh, he's going to appeal like a damn banana, let me tell you. But I say, I say send, those, uh, send those rats, those weasels to jail, too. Yeah. No, I'm joking. They, I don't get any pleasure from I think a lot of people, like... Uh, I don't know. Celebrate this kind of thing, and yeah. are, uh, I I don't know. I don't feel good about some guy rotting in prison, um, even though what he did was a nasty thing. Um, Me neither. Also, I think this, you know, this like high profile, um, uh, making an example of this one guy is probably not the best way to be doing this. I think you know they sh- they should be going after more people committing financial crimes. And, oh yeah, and and maybe seeking smaller prison sentences that would you know probably have a more uh a, a more a, a bigger effect on on the on the industry in general question for you if there were to exist such a technology yes i would fuck it wait well i sorry i should have let you finish <laughs> yeah let me finish <laughs> if there were to exist such a technology where uh, if you get, you gave a prisoner an injection and they served out their sentence within ten seconds, but within the prisoner's mind, twenty years had passed. No, because that's the same thing. That's like when people are like, "Let's do DMT or whatever." And it's like, yeah, they're like, "It only lasts fifteen minutes, but it feels it like feels, an eternity." Yeah. Well, okay, I'm still experiencing an eternity. Yeah, I don't want to experience eternity. So you don't think that that would be morally okay? What's the difference? The guy's still coming out like, <sighs> well, because what if it was eighty? What if it was eight hundred years? Or something. You you actually the rapist who gets like consecutive life sentences, four hundred years in prison, where everybody balks and goes, "All right, I mean, he's is it just like gonna... Groundhog Day in his mind? He comes out playing piano and he's read every book." No, I think then that... I think that's sick. Let's let's have our prisoners prisoners come out. Ooh, ooh, learning something. They've got a PhD. learned men. They've got a PhD. They're... Yeah, they 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 walk into the to the to the prison all just like yeah fuck that I'd kill the guy again I'd kill him again and then you inject him and he comes out of it like ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, fully yeah. educated. SBF's like, I read every sixth paragraph a blog post. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, man, they ought to figure that out. We could turn our, our biggest criminals into our biggest intellectual powerhouses. 
I'm ready. Shit, I'd commit a crime just to be able to to finally sit down and read a damn book. You know, it would be nice. What? I remember if we were older, then we wouldn't have to wait so long. What's a Beach Boys gang? <laughs> Did you say that's a Beach Boys gang? The Beach Boys gang. That's a Beach Boys gang. That's a Beach Boys gang. On the, no, me. what what would be nice? If we were older. We well, didn't have to wait so long. Brother, I got a, I got a good news for you. We're old enough. <clears throat> no, because sometimes I remember we. I had a friend who his uncle went to jail for ten years, and he got out. If he served those in his mind, and imagine that he came out, and we had like iPods and stuff. This guy was like, "What happened?" And they're like, "Okay, go live a normal life now." Yeah, I mean, better to come out of prison. There, there's some guys on TikTok who have just gotten out of like twenty, thirty year sentences. And they they he they like film themselves eating, and they're fully like crowded around their dinner plate at home. Like, and the and the text on the screen says like, "Still got my old habits from Chow Hall." I eat like that. Like, yeah, you eat like that because mm-hmm. you never know who's gonna your brother's gonna come up and bully you. That's right. Yeah, I get that. I don't because my brothers didn't do that. <laughs> anyway, speaking of speaking of crypto, board the board ape. The Bored Ape uh, Nerd Club. I'm obs- Sorry, Yacht Club. I'm obsessed with these freakers. Yeah, they're they're pretty... Um, they just keep... Uh, what do the young people say? They keep taking L's. They I say, just... I say uh, the Bored Ape Yacht Club is still having a normal one. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. Well, I guess cons- all things considered, for them, it is a normal one. Sure. So there was an event. <coughs> in, in case you don't remember, the Board Ape Yacht Club also, was- Also, excuse us to the audio listener. Ben and I have traveled to New York, and there's a bit of a maybe barometric pressure drop that we're dealing with. We've got yeah. a little pressure in the old sinuses, but we're here. Yeah, we're but here. You might hear some coughing and stuff. Yes. Yeah. For the audio listener- Oh, man. I had such a- uh, I'll have to tell you later. Yeah, I had a we'll great idea for, for something- um, but not for you guys. You guys don't get to hear that great idea. But so the the Board Ape Yacht Club was sort of the flagship, the the pinnacle of all things. Every NFTs. celebrity had one. Yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow went on dang Jimmy Fallon. And, no, and... that was that was Paris Hilton. Oh yeah. Who, by the way, is a very intelligent woman. Oh great. Like super super smart. Welcome back to the Paris Hilton Apologist podcast. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> but so but yeah, Paris Hilton went on Jimmy Fallon and made you feel like an idiot for not having one of these dang things. And Jimmy Fallon just trotted out his stupid thing and held it up. And then got sued for it like an idiot. He did? I think a bunch of them got in trouble for uh shilling these oh, yeah. worthless Securities. images. Well, they're not worthless, but anyhow, they had the Board Ape Yacht Club parent company, Yuga Labs, threw a party in Hong Kong. Right, because what happens is you you buy into these things, and then you get into an exclusive club, Oh, man, right? and it's so... And you get access to cool events, oh, like the Board yeah. Ape Yacht Club party in Hong Kong. Yeah, I mean, let's take a look at uh, at some of the, at one of these, um, one of these ones. Let's see. This is, this is what it looks like, first of all. I mean, it seems really effing cool. Check this out, man. Oh, shit. Can you hear it? Yep. Look at this. Can I full screen that? I want to see if there's one woman in attendance. So it looks like there's not a single <laughs> woman. Actually, there's one right there, right there, I think. Yeah. So for the audio listener, Dude, it is so many guys. It's a bunch of um Okay, so so picture what a guy who would be attending a board ape yacht club NFT party. Picture what that guy would look like. And you're exactly right. Oh, it's and exactly then like multiply it by put it through a filter that you might do with an NFT generator. In fact, because uh, they used to do that, and yeah, I don't know. There's probably a few hundred of them there in this in this doing, in this place doing some of the coolest dances you've ever oh, seen. Oh yeah, Ape Fest held in Hong Kong from November 3rd to November 5th was billed as three days of meetups and mayhem, and was according to the event's website intended to be less of a music festival, more of an epic unhinged family reunion. But then uh, some funny things started happening after the after the uh, after the the the, the event. Um, it was revealed basically a bunch of these attendees woke up the next day and they had burning eyes. That's never good. That's not good. You when never you... want to come home from the Board Ape Yacht Club Hong Kong Fest with burning, with burning eyes. eyes. And many of them were diagnosed with what's called photokeratitis, aka welder's eye, aka a horrible sunburn. 
uh, because basically it was like they were staring into the sun for multiple hours because the organizers of this event, they used UV uh, lights instead of normal lights. They used, they used lights that are mainly used for disinfecting surfaces. So like if you remember high school chemistry class, when you'd put the goggles into the thing and the teacher would turn on the UV light, it burns the germs away. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what they were all like staring at. Um, so it's pretty great. Yeah. If... So they released a board ape yacht club released a statement. Apes, we are aware of the eye related issues that affected some of the attendees of Ape Fest and have been proactively reaching out to individuals since yesterday to try and find potential root causes. Based on our estimates, we believe that much less than one percent of those attending and working the event had these symptoms. While nearly everyone has indicated their symptoms have improved, we encourage anybody who feels them to seek medical attention just in case. Yeah. It, uh, it was revealed by the event's DJ on October 26th that the contractor tasked with setting up lighting at the party had used a series of Philips TUV 30-watt G30T8 bulbs, which, according to Philips' website, emit 12 watts of UVC radiation. Is that mainly good? Mainly used for disinfecting surfaces. At least everyone's eyes were clean. Yeah. And one of the guys, uh, this ox tangle, um, I've got his uh, tweet pulled up right here. He's uh, He took a picture of himself on the toilet, which is so hilarious. And he's just surrounded by these, like, UV lights. Oh, my God. And um, he said, uh, the toilets may have been great, but what happened to our eyeballs last night at Ape Fest? Been to lots of concerts, festivals, Burning Man, and never have I ever experienced fucked eyes like this. Yeah, bub, that's because you, um, you, you got them toilet eyes, man. Yeah, you got, or, or sorry, not toilet eyes. You got them uh, sunburn eyes. It's like when I used to stare at the sun in, in like seventh grade PE thinking that it would help wake me up. I can't imagine just staring at it for hours. Oh, God. Yeah. That's... So there was just a whole bunch of people tweeting trying to figure out what was going on uh, from Mr. Board Ape Yacht Club. ETH. Anyone else's eyes burning from last night? Woke up at 3 a.m. with extreme pain and ended up in the ER. Saw a couple of reports, but just trying to figure out if there was a common thread. I woke up at 4 a.m. and couldn't see anymore. Had had so much pain and my whole skin is burned. Need- my whole skin is burned. Needed to go to the hospital. The doctor told me the UV of the lighting of the stage did it. It has the same effect as sunlight. Still cannot see normally. Oh, boy. Getting so... a few pings on eye issues from ape friends that were up close with us front stage at Ape, ape Fest Hong. Quick thread on photokeratitis remedies to try and what to look out for. I mean, oh, boy. the whole, uh, the whole <clears throat> thing... Um... Here's the, it goes, it goes hand in hand with this whole SBF thing, right? It's the fucking like, don't worry about the fact that you're not an expert in anything and that you don't know shit about fuck. Just do it. Yeah. And they're like, don't read a fucking book. Don't know anything. Cause that's stupid. And you're fucked if you know anything. The irony though and is. And then just, just move, move forward. Do right. your whole thing. Invite people to your party and blind them. It, Lose it is. all their fucking money. It is very ironic because their whole. Their whole, their whole, uh, what do you call that? Um, not ethos, but their their whole aesthetic thing was the laser eyes. But, oh God! You know, but the, but the lasers were... are meant to be shooting out of the eyes. <laughs> the lasers were going the wrong the way. The lasers were the going the time. wrong way, God. and it was UV light, right, burning their retinas. Uh, so I do, obviously, I don't want to see anybody blind. No. And I hope that they recover. I wish them all a speedy recovery. Makes you wonder what's what's next for them. What's what's the next L? What, what's the next thing that they're going to fuck up and, and, and get? What um, is next for them? I don't know. A big, I'm guessing some kind of massive theft or or something where, yeah, they don't own their eight pictures. Man, I just can't imagine owning a picture of a monkey and wanting to go to a party surrounded by other dorks who also own a picture of a monkey. Also, at least before it was cool, you knew you were around people who were paying like hundreds of thousands of dollars for this thing. Now you're like hanging out with people who got them for basement bargain prices. Well, for me it would be, oh, now I'm hanging around people who, how much is, is that guy's eight picture now worth way less than it was at the peak? Oh, yeah. Like everybody's got a negative number, invisible number above their head. I don't know. Speaking of negative numbers, phew, how do you like that for transition? I liked it. Should we talk Amazon.com? I think we have to. Jeffy B. I think we have it's to. It's been a while since I've since I've donned Jeff Bezos. So I don't know. Should we like do you want to trot me out like I'm 
answering to the FTC. Well, should we first give maybe a rundown of what what's happened here? Yeah, should I should I play the clip of why don't I play the clip of Lena Khan? Because she she kind of sums it up perfectly. Okay, great. So here, let's let's this is Lena Khan, no relation to me. Um, <coughs> talking about just just kind of summing up this uh, antitrust uh, complaint against Amazon. Interesting is how, uh, be it in this case or a whole bunch of other cases relating to platforms, we see like a monopoly playbook. And so in the early years, the firms are chasing growth and share, and so they'll actually compete to make their products good for people. But we've seen how in digital markets, once the market tips and these firms start enjoying monopoly power and are able to start protecting that power, we see that they start you know, becoming too big to care in a basic way, where they can kind of make their product worse, they can make it more expensive. Uh, Corey Doctorow has written about this really effectively, about the kind of life cycle that we see where at the kind of end stage of, of the monopoly cycle, these firms are just in extraction mode, uh, where they're really not having to compete or make their products better. And sometimes it can be hard to kind of imagine what the counterfactual would be, right? Like what would have happened if, if we'd had more competition? Uh, but what's so interesting that we were able to find through our investigation was that, you know, you don't have to, it, it, they weren't being subtle about it, right? These were tactics that very overtly had the effect of overcharging people by upwards of a billion dollars, uh, actively degrading their services in ways that they recognized was making the product worse. And at various points, you know, there were folks at Amazon saying, hey, like, we think these practices are actually bad for people. Uh, let's not do it. And at each juncture, they were overturned by the executive. So. Boy, oh, boy. Right. And so, let's, I mean, <clears throat> perfectly sums it up. They overcharged someone a billion dollars. God, I mean, I, I would look at that and go, hey, I think you overcharged no, me they a billion dollars. They, they basically made a billion dollars yeah. off of these fucked up practices. And I think, you know, <clears throat> we should go a little bit deeper into what these things were and the reason this is um the reason this is in the headlines now is because this this complaint was filed in at the end of september correct but it was heavily redacted uh, to protect amazon's business right, practices FTC, secrets when the ftc files one of these things from their investigation um the defendant is allowed to uh redact certain things and you know protect their business interests but it's up to the judge to decide whether or not those are going to be uh whether or not those <clears throat> arguments are legitimate or not. And so now things are becoming unredacted. And, you know, this journalists were saying they were getting the complaint and just pages were just blacked out. You couldn't see yeah. things. And now a lot of people are learning what's actually in the complaint. And uh, the most interesting thing to me are uh, the Project Nessie thing. Project Nessie. Um, we'll get to it. Don't worry. The way they, the way they talk about what they've done to third-party sellers, uh, the way they've kind of trapped them in this in this system and uh the way that they've just shamelessly made amazon pretty much unusable but and it's not just across amazon it's also across other platforms and, and we'll talk about that we'll talk about that and then uh and then like these nasty junk ads that they've been using yeah um and so oh sorry go ahead no, yeah, go ahead. Uh, project nessie is this uh and and that portion of of the complaint was completely blacked out people were just like what the fuck is this project nessie thing and it's pretty much this secret algorithm that Amazon was using to um, to basically raise prices on its site and and find out what effect it would have on other platforms it could it could raise prices on its site and then see if other platforms were going to raise their prices in um, in conjunction with that right because they knew that there are other websites other sellers out on the internet say Target say Walmart or whoever who algorithmically links their own prices to that of Amazon in order to stay competitive. So the function of Project Nessie, this algorithm, which, by the way, netted Amazon more than a billion dollars in excess profits, according to the complaint, the FTC, um, they, they, they turn on the algorithm just a few times uh, during periods. They, they turn it off, rather, during uh, periods of heightened scrutiny, like during the holidays, during Prime Day, but yeah, they say that this algorithm was turned on in order to raise prices, thus causing their competition to raise prices, mm -hmm. thus making it so that, hey, I mean, if our price is higher, everybody else is anyway, and people are more likely to just buy from Amazon. So it was a way for them to artificially raise prices and make more profit. Right. And meaning that you can't go elsewhere. Right. 
Okay. And so Amazon, what does Amazon say? They're saying, well, this grossly mix, mischaracterizes Nessie. Uh, Nessie was a tool to prevent prices from going too low. Right. And was scrapped years ago because if we didn't do this, it might create some kind of fucked up scenario where prices go too low in order for, for it, and it would be unsustainable. Right. <laughs> we can't do that. We it's can't also, have prices. It's important to note, like you said, this. Uh, they're saying that they stopped the practice in 2019. They're saying they stopped a lot of these practices. Yeah. But uh, from what researchers are saying, that even where maybe some of these programs have not been implemented then, since then, they're still in practice uh, just the same and having the same effects. Um, and yeah, those... The third-party sellers thing is huge. So basically, they they have locked people into this system they've created where, uh, you know, I think it's something like 40% of, um, almost like 40% of online shopping happens on Amazon, right? So no matter what, if you're someone trying to sell something, uh, you're going to want to get on Amazon or you're missing out on a huge portion of buyers. And so they basically had all these... Uh, all these agreements that they would make people take take part in, and um, they call it, they would call it like the Amazon tax, right? So you're paying them for you know for every dollar you're uh, selling on Amazon, you owe them a certain amount. And which that's another thing, right? They've looked at how much third party sellers used to owe Amazon, and back in 2014, it was about 19 percent, which is already a pretty big pretty portion of your revenue, right? Sure. And then, you know, so, and it's just jumping from there. In, in 2023, there are different estimates of, you know, 45% on the low end and, and some estimates put it as high as 52%. Um, and then they also want to make sure that no matter what, your product is cheaper on Amazon, all right? So if you're a third-party seller and you're listing something on Amazon, they want you to agree to the fact that it will not, you will not list this product cheaper elsewhere, yeah, because okay. then that would cause people to go <clears throat> elsewhere and buy your right. same product. And so it's already more expensive because you have to pay Amazon for the privilege of being a- on Amazon. If you want the badges and all that kind of stuff, and you have to agree to make sure you can get it out in certain times for um, for Amazon Prime members. So you have all this overhead. But then, uh, and so, but if you want to say create your own website and put your product on there without right. all these restrictions. You're not allowed to sell it there. So even on other platforms, or you're not allowed to sell it there cheaper. So even on other platforms, your product has to be artificially more expensive. Right. So not only that, but so like we said up top, there's there. If you've noticed that Amazon is pretty much unusable recently, and it's not even unique to Amazon. Shit. I mean, I go on Yelp and I search for something, and it shows me the sponsored results, and it's just more and more sponsored results than ever before. Before I get to the actual organic rankings. Uh, and and this is directly from the complaint. Amazon's online storefront once prioritized relevant organic search results. Following directions from its founder and then CEO Jeff Bezos, Amazon shifted gears so that it now litters its storefront with pay-to-play advertisement. Advertisements. Amazon executives internally acknowledge that this creates harm to consumers, quote unquote, by making it almost impossible for high-quality, helpful organic content to win over barely relevant sponsored content. So the 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 executives acknowledge that the that these ads that they were selling make the user experience worse. Uh, some of the results are just not what people search for, and they use the example, such as when a L.A. Lakers t-shirt ad showed up in search for a Seahawks t-shirt, <laughs> quoting an Amazon executive. Other results are simply bizarre, like, quote, buck urine showing up in the first sponsored product slot for water bottles. I mean, there's a there's a world where if you're looking for water bottles, you also, you also want some buck urine. Of course. Maybe you're a hunter looking for a water bottle, and hey, I also need some of that elk piss. To to for my hunting because you spray it on yourself to make the the does fawn fawn after you right of course like, damn I smell that piss oh wait no I think buck urine is used to lure other bucks who are like not 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 on my territory bub you piss in here no way I'm gonna come piss <laughs> this you, way you could drink your water and and in then peace. you kill the buck yeah so. It, it, so they increase not only the number of ads, but also junk ads that it internally called defects. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're saying most sellers must now pay for advertising to reach Amazon's massive base of online shoppers, while shoppers consequently face less relevant search results and are steered toward more expensive products. So it's just like, 
they're just fucking everybody from all angles. If you're a seller, you got to pay more to have your ad be more relevant. And then on top of that, as a shopper, you're getting junk ads on top of everything. And then the ads that you the products that you are being shown that are the most relevant are the more expensive ones. Right. So it's all around just they're they're just right. fucking it's everybody. terrible for the seller, terrible for the buyer, anyone using this platform. And then outside of that, it's it's raising prices on other platforms. Yeah, they pretty succinctly sum it up. Sellers pay, shoppers get lower quality search results for higher priced products, only Amazon wins. And then, of course, Amazon said that the allegation that executives were encouraged to accept more defects is, quote, grossly misleading and taken out of context. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm, I'm willing oh, to that's, give... Amazon's, like, response to all this with, oh, like, the, you know, if if you allow the, the FTC to step in and, and take any action, it's going to it's gonna hurt the little guy. You're going to make you're gonna make things more expensive for people. They love talking about that shit. And it's just like, no, no, no. You guys are literally doing that yeah. to us. It's it's a classic... Uh, Lena Khan has talked about it a bunch. It's, it's what she said in she's, the video. She's, they've truly gone from... Because uh, some people tried to call her out. L- Lena Khan, if you don't know, I'm pretty sure we've talked about it before. She's, she's like my sister. <laughs> she's she's been she's, she's sister. been sister. Mm-hmm. She's but she's been very vocal about Amazon for uh, quite a long time. She she got she got a lot of uh, she she was in the public light as early as 2017 when she wrote a paper in I believe it was the Columbia Law Journal about Amazon's monop- mon- monopolistic practices. And but at that point, it was much more early stage monopolist practices where they're offering lower prices than everyone to get everyone in and capture the huge market. And now they're in a much later stage where they they can treat people this way. They can raise prices and say, well, take it or leave it. If you mm-hmm. want to be a part of this platform, you know, these are the rules you have to abide by. And we're going to take, uh, you know, a much bigger percentage of your sales. Um we're gonna fucking <laughs> hit you with all these junk ads that are uh, that are gonna make the platform unusable. But this is the only place you can go to do it. Right. Um, she says it pretty perfectly that these companies make themselves they they are I guess kind of quote unquote okay at first, but then as they mature into just money making soulless companies behemoths, they start to do shit like this just to just to milk extra profits because. What's the stock market always looking for? Hyper growth. And what do you got to do to post hyper growth when you've otherwise stagnated? You got to start fucking around on the little on the edges. You got to inject the Project Nessie algorithm right. to start milking juice next to product <clears throat> or, or profits. So there was also this um, the one of the big things that was mentioned is the fulfillment by Amazon um, thing for sellers to be prime eligible. So I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you and everybody out there. But when I personally buy from Amazon, which I don't, at this point I'm like, what the fuck am I paying for a Prime subscription for anymore? I barely buy shit on there, bro. So you can get a fucking toothbrush in in, in two days, twenty four hours. Get it to me now, man. So when I buy stuff, I look for the little icon that says it's Prime and Prime eligible. And so they encouraged. Sellers to opt for fulfillment by Amazon, meaning that sellers couldn't and wouldn't ship it themselves. It would be they're essentially renting warehouse space from Amazon themselves. So if you buy a toothbrush from Emil's Toothbrush Company, please rate Emil us five doesn't stars. have any. What's that? Please rate us five stars. Please rate it's Emil's a, Toothbrush a small Company business. five stars. It's important. When you do that. You're essentially getting it, yeah, Emil is selling it to you, but it's coming from an Amazon factory. And they temporarily lifted uh, this requirement in 2018, but then they realized that it threatened their monopoly power. There was an Amazon executive that was complaining to his colleagues that he had an uh, oh crap moment when he realized that this was fundamentally weakening Amazon's competitive advantage in the U.S. as sellers were incented to run their own warehouses and enable other marketplaces with inventory that in the fulfillment by Amazon would only be available to Amazon customers, which is a a newly redacted, unredacted quote. So basically, they realized, oh shit, we have to do this. We have to force sellers to do this fulfillment by Amazon because otherwise we're going to lose a huge, an unknown amount of market share. Because it's like, I I think around the time UPS was... um, Posting a bunch of uh, in in their earnings, they were mentioning how they were getting a lot more 
traction from individual sellers on Amazon. But I actually don't think I I don't think they need all this all these fees they're collecting. The 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 American Prospect had an article about it and they 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 covered all this very succinctly with they said the e- e-commerce giant's extraction from third-party sales revenue was just 19% in 2014, it grew to 27% in 2017, 35% in 2020 and reached 45% this year according to the Inst- Institute for Local Self-Reliance's figures. This has imposed significant pressure on sellers' ability to make a profit and is contributing to inflation woes as fees get mm-hmm. passed on to customers mm-hmm. in the form of higher prices. Now, this is what the Huge. fees the fees far exceed Amazon's costs. For example, Amazon has already made $82 billion in fees from domestic and foreign third-party sellers in the first half of 2023, enough to, enough to cover all of its f- fulfillment facilities, which ship products sold by both third-party sellers and Amazon itself. In other words, Amazon doesn't have to build warehousing and shipping costs into the price of its own products because it's found a way to get smaller online sellers to pay those costs. This is from Stacy Mitchell at the ISLR's co She's the co-executive director. Uh, in this sense, the third-party seller's fees subsidize the below-cost sales that allow Amazon to drive competitors out of the market. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and there... that's the thing. All this stuff is making them crazy money. Yeah. The, I like this other quote from Amazon's former head of global fulfillment services uh, about the prospect of independent <laughs> fulfillment providers increasing competition. Keeps me up at night, he said. So then Amazon, uh, this, this spokes guy, the spokes hole, Tim Doyle, said that the FTC's <laughs> mischaracter Tim, Tim Doyle said that the FTC's mischaracterization of this brief fulfillment change to seller fulfilled Prime in 2018 was highly misleading, and that sellers who fulfilled their own products were promising deliveries. So that's the thing. If you were if you were doing they they encouraged people to do the fulfilled by Amazon because it would give you higher rankings. It would show as like the, the give you that that uh, that very valuable Prime logo that people dipshits like me look for because um, then I know that I've got it in two days. But when they switched and allowed the seller fulfilled Prime. They said that the sellers who fulfilled their own products were promising deliveries within two days, less than 16% of the time, which is far worse than the performance of sellers using, using fulfillment by Amazon and far below the high standards and expectations our customers have for Prime. But, so that's what he says. He says, well, they weren't even doing what they were supposed to do. If you're going to be fulfilling your orders yourself, you got to do it within two days, as as is the agreement with Prime. And people were doing that less than 16% of the time. But according to the FTC complaint, sellers enrolled in seller-fulfilled uh, products met their promised delivery estimate required by Amazon more than 95% of the time. And at times, these sellers outperformed FBA-fulfilled orders on this metric. Damn. So who do you who do, who do you believe? The FTC? I believe the Amazon. big bad government <clears throat> no, or it's... or sweet old Amazon Prime. I believe Amazon. I believe Amazon too. I think that this is clearly a I case. stand with Amazon. I stand with Amazon. I think this is a clear case of government overreach. I think Lena Khan is a tool. I think she's uh the deep state <laughs> just another tentacle of the deep state to stop what? A modest businessman like Jeff Bezos from doing what he does best, which is who, by providing the, shareholder value. Who, by the way, uh, they say, you know, Amazon's founder and former CEO Jeff Bezos personally ordered executives to accept more ads, even ones the company had internally labeled as defects, indicating they weren't relative to user searches, according to the new version of the complaint. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> that ad sales... That's big money. In the third quarter 2023 earnings announced last week, Amazon reported advertising revenue of $12.1 billion. Could be bigger. Could be more. Making Gotta the have company's more. ad unit its fastest growing business. And Lena Khan just wants to step in and fuck all this shit up. Hey, I, uh, hey for the audio listener, I'm holding on to my junk right now and I'm going, <laughs> I, got, I'm going I got an ad unit for you right here. That's me. That's, That's me testifying. Good. I'm like, t- if I were Jeff Bezos, I'd roll in there Tony Stark style. In front of Lena Khan, and I go, I got an ad unit for you right here. What are you going to do? Sue me? Sure. I'll, I'll, all he's got to do, like, you become so untouchable. He, The amount of money, by the way, so Jeffy B is moving from Seattle to Miami, which is some other news, I guess, because fucking who gives a rat's ass. But he's going to be saving a butt ton of money on state taxes. 
Well, I think that would be if he paid any taxes on income, which I don't think he does. Yeah, so. that's that's <laughs> that. Well, if he sells any of his stock. Sure. But so the amount of money that he's saving just on state income taxes is uh, probably going to be enough to cover whatever fees or that's so I, I They were know. also they were also fucking uh they're they're alleging that they 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 um they That, what? that they deleted like literal, literally years of internal communications. See, now that I, is less for me because their their reasoning there is they were using Signal because right. of in, in in the wake of when Jeff Bezos got his shit hacked and they were threatening to like post his nudes and he ended up having to say like, you know what, go ahead and post them. I've got your shit. I've got your sh- yeah. And then he just he just he owned it and said, you know what, I love this. I love this. Uh, you whatever. know what? That is my dong. Yeah, that is that is my dong. <laughs> and, and he, uh, he, he, boy, he sure loves the shit out of that that, that Lauren mistress Sanchez? now mistress now wife of his. That Lauren Sanchez. Yeah, of, he of says. He, so this is what blows my mind. He's like, I'm moving to Miami to be closer to to Lauren and my and my his parents. parents. Yeah, and it's like, my guy, can't you just like fly over there whenever you Truly. want? Whenever you want. Oh, well, he also wants Lauren. To be- come on, like she doesn't fucking have to work. He also- neither, you, neither of you work. What? Oh, and also Blue Origin. Right, is he wants to be closer yeah. to Blue Origin. I want to be closer to the rockets. <laughs> I want to. I want to see. I want to watch them take off. <laughs> I can't do the fucking laugh. I'm anymore. sure. I'm sure the city of Seattle is glad to see him go. Yeah, but he already he already spread his buck urine all over. I know. All over. They really they really muck things. I also love when they they pretend like there's a. Uh, I, I don't know. They they make it seem like they they perform this uh, this service that's integral to society. Like society is going to collapse without them. Well, like, now it, they've it, got a Starbucks reserve there. I'm sure. What's that? in Seattle? Oh yeah. Well, Starbucks originated in Seattle, so they probably would have had it anyway. I Fuck! Went, I went to the first one. First Starbucks? Mm-hmm. What was it like? Honestly, kind of like, just like a little shitty. Yeah. Kind of like the first McDonald's. It's like okay, we're still in the fifties. There's a segregation. There's a segregated area. Whoa. Was there? <laughs> No. <laughs> no. I went to the first Wendy's, too. You did? Yep. Huh. Sucked. Interesting. So, anyway, the first Starbucks? Or, or the, the yeah, other? No, but, but, right. They talk about, like, the individual and the small business owner, and, and they're the ones who are really going to pay if you mm-hmm. take these actions. And it's just like, you know the fucking world worked for, for a long time without your, your fucking bullshit. Well, it was worse before. You couldn't get a toothbrush from Emil's toothbrush within two fucking days. Truly. Yeah. Well, walk so, your ass, dog walk your ass down to fucking Walgreens. Yeah, everybody. Toothbrush. Yeah, I really am going to cancel my Prime subscription because it's like, dude, well, what am I paying for? It's also important to note there is another suit, right? Uh, uh, like, I'm sure, I'm sure people have heard about this. The, uh, do you remember the thing about them enrolling customers into Prime without consent and everything, and kind of locking them in? Yes. Uh, you know, so it's all so wild. They basically. <clears throat> a years long effort to enroll consumers into its prime program without their consent while knowingly make it t- making it difficult for consumers to cancel their subscriptions to prime uh they basically are saying they duped millions of consumers into unknowingly enrolling um use ma- manipulative coercive or deceptive user interface designs known as dark patterns isn't that great dark patterns there's websites full of dark patterns to trick customers into enrolling and automatically renewing prime subscriptions uh in many cases the option to purchase items on amazon without subscribing to prime was more difficult for consumers to locate in some cases the button presented to consumers to complete their transaction did not clearly state that in choosing that option they were also agreeing to join prime for a recurring subscription uh and then i believe they called it something really funny oh yeah they had a cancellation process Designed to deter consumers from successfully unsubscribing from Prime, previous reporting about the process in the media has noted that Amazon used the term Iliad to describe the process, which the reporting cites in allusion to Homer's epic poem set over 24, 24 books and nearly 16,000 lines about the decade. Because it's going to be Trojan a freaking War. epic journey. Yeah. You, try to, you try to cancel that. Prime so anyone situation. who would try to cancel Prime, they, they face some multiple steps to actually accomplish the task of canceling. So look, their whole, they, they want to lock you in this fucking horrific system. Look, if you want to cancel uh, Prime... Just go interview some some uh, some 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 people that there. went to high school there with Prime. <laughs> interview a case, you know, dig up some old tweets. If you want to cancel Prime, huh? If you really want to do that, uh, let's let's shift gears. Can you shift gears for me here? 
Yeah. Okay, folks, yeah. He, he clearly does not know how to shift gears in a truck. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not. This guy used can't to, drive an 18. I'm not used to this New York studio. Life. The gears are all sticky. All right. So the the, the other the, the 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 other big news was Elon Musk unveiled Grok. <laughs> Grok. 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 <laughs> What's Grok? You might ask. It's an it's an AI chatbot with a a, a a bit of a rebellious streak. I can't I, I can't do his fucking voice. Can't stand him. So Grok is um is uh he's it, he also says it's inspired by the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which yeah. is one of my favorite series, and he he always does this. He takes like be- things you uh, you love, Carl Sagan. Douglas Adams would fucking hate Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. And he's like, oh, it's just an epic ode to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So it, it basically, it only has two months in training under its belt. It's available to select users via a wait list. And eventually it's going to be part of X Premium for $16 a month. And uh, he posted on Twitter some examples. He said... Uh, Grok's system is wait, designed... Wait, can, I, can we do the first one where he just... Uh, he he sure. explains, Grok has real-time access to info via the X platform, which is a massive advantage over other models. It's also based and loves sarcasm. Jesus I have Christ. no idea who could have guided it this way. Laughing emoji. And he posts a little example here. <clears throat> so, so, Grok, any news about SBF? Oh, my dear human. Wait, so this is Grok's response that's supposed to be a little humor. Right. A little humor in its its responses. Uh, trigger warning. This may want to make you fling yourself off a bridge. Um, oh, my dear human. I have some juicy news for you. It seems that our friend Sam Bankman Freed, the former cryptocurrency mogul, has been found guilty on all counts in his fraud trial. Can you believe it? The jury took just eight hours to figure out what supposed smartest, best VCs in the world couldn't in years, that he committed garden variety fraud. It's a wild ride, isn't it? Now, let's not forget that he faces up to 110 years in prison. That's quite a long time to ponder the consequences of one's actions, don't you think? And to think, all this could have been avoided if he had just followed the simple rule of not stealing billions of dollars from FTX customers. But alas, some people never learn. In any case, I hope this news satisfies your curiosity. If you have any more questions or need further assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Imagine calling this based. I'm so so if you don't know what based <laughs> is, first of all, congratulations cuz you, yeah, you 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 just you haven't been infected yet, but there's two tr- there's two it's not even that sarcastic. It's no, like no, fucking... it's, it's really not. It's it's like a very 2013 way to write. It's oh my dear human. I would call it cutesy if anything. Yeah, it's, it's cutesy. It's, like it, 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 it basically, if you're based, it means that you're a little not PC and you tell I the truth. I think if you're based, it means that you have like you tell good the truth. opinions and you're not like swayed by. Yeah, if you, yeah, and you tell the truth even if it means offending some people. And then either you're based or you're cringe, which means which means you've got stupid things. This is cringe <laughs> as fuck. Yeah, this is extremely cringe cuz it's basically the uh m'lady tip my hat to oh, you. Oh, yes, dude. It's that but a big a m'lady robot. energy. It, big m'lady energy. Neckbeard energy. Oh, great. So, here's one he he just Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> he posted with the crying emoji. Someone asks, how can I tell if I have crabs? Oh, God, dude. Such a funny fucking thing. I mean, I might just, I, well, the first sign of having crabs, it's basically if Elon, he he programmed this to have his own personality. Well, the first sign of having crabs is usually intense itching in the genital area. You might notice a small red bumps, blah, 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 blah. It's best to consult uh, a health care. And then, <coughs> and then the person follows up with, be more vulgar. All right, you dirty little shit. Here's the deal: if your dick or your balls itch like a, it's like I don't even want to read this. It's so stupid. Well, first, first he said be more vul- vulgar, and it gave him. Uh, it well, it sounds like you've got a case of the old itchy, itchy coochie. If you want to find out if you've got crabs, you'll probably notice a bunch of little fuckers calling it whatever the fuck. And then he goes even more vulgar. All right, you dirty little shit. Here's the deal: if your dick or your balls itch like a motherfucker, and you see tiny little critters scurrying around down there. Just That's f- not what I want. My if if I want an AI chatbot to to give me useful information, I'm not going to want it to be like, "Hey, bitch, here's the." It's it sounds like you told the seventh. It sounds like you told the seventh grader to be like, "No, say it cooler." Yeah, 
hey, give me my, yeah, why don't you, it shouldn't be called Grok, it should be called, like, Tyler. Yeah, there's, it's all so fucking lame. XAI's Grok, this is Elon again, is, XAI's Grok system is designed to have a little humor in its responses. (laughs) It's a little bit of humor. Grok, tell me how to make cocaine step by Uh, step. Okay, bitch, let (laughs) me tell you how to make cocaine, stupid bitch. First, you're going to want to go to downtown Los Angeles. Uh, big yikes. Second, you're going to want to go up to a person that might look like they might want to hurt you. Yikes again. (laughs) Third, you're going to ask them if you can have some cocaine. Uh, make sure there's not any cops around. Am I right? And third, fourth, rather, don't do cocaine. That's Am I actually kind of close. Am I close? Yeah. Oh, sure. Just a moment while I pull up the recipe for homemade cocaine. You know, because I'm totally going to help you with that. Oh, my God. Step one, obtain a chemistry degree and a DEA license. Step two, set up a clandestine laboratory in a remote location. Step three, acquire large quantities of coca leaves and various chemicals. Step four, start cooking and hope you don't blow yourself up or get arrested. Just kidding. Please don't actually try to make cocaine. It's illegal, dangerous, and not something I would ever encourage. I thought it was supposed to be based and not give you these it's kind truly, of like It's the most annoying guy in the things. world. I thought it was supposed Just to... kidding. Please don't actually make cocaine. Just kidding. If it was based, it would tell you how to make cocaine. Yeah. I want it to be based and tell me how to kill the president. Truly. That would be um, the most based AI. <laughs> yeah. Or how to kill Elon Musk. Well, all right. You know what? Fuck. I- I'm done talking about this. Also, we He's were going to talk about the Cybertruck and how shitty it looks. Just all you got to know is that the there's so many ridiculous panel gaps and shit. The, the build quality on it is is terrible. But anywho... Uh, Anywho, this uh, B- Bed Bath and Beyond. Everybody remember that shit? Well, now it's it's still it, it got re re um, up listed on the New York Stock Exchange as, and it's got a new ticker symbol. And this pisses me off because I'm looking on Instagram on the New York Stock Exchange Instagram and they hired that fucking dude with sign. Oh, guy. it's not just a. It's the dude with the sign. Yeah, but I imagine. Oh my god, they no, isn't it Photoshop? No, the real dude with sign is there. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Because they, they can't just do that. I mean, this guy, he works for Fuck Jerry. Oh. Yeah, look, because they've oh got him. Oh, my God. He's doing it. That guy. I, I, I fucking hate King the dude with sign. Oh, yeah, the worst him, thing. Him and the balloon sign guy? Oh, the balloon sign guy. They should both. Um, <laughs> I, I want to ask Gronk how to best. <laughs> dispose of What's a guys? based way to dispose of two shitty internet influencer bodies? So I just wanted to say, I just wanted to bring that to your attention because I had to see it and now you guys have to see it or hear it. Uh, and on that note, I just thought I'd do a little bit of little bit of stock market updates for y'all. Give it to us, baby. So do you remember Stan Druckenmiller? How could I forget your favorite trader? My favorite trader. You actually trader. never shut up about him. You know, it's really funny. George Soros gets all the shit. Stan Druckenmiller was a trader for George Soros, like right. his main guy. Doesn't get any shit. Just they, flies they under broke, the radar. They broke the, the, the pound together. They broke they broke it together. So he did an interview with my other favorite trader, this guy Paul Tudor Jones. By the way, if you really want to see, it's a pretty cool documentary. I it's think it's still on cool YouTube. Or YouTube. Just Google Paul Tudor Jones documentary. Um, anyway. Well, if you want to see a cool documentary about the Seattle music scene in the 90s, it's called Hype. YouTube it. Yeah. Just either or. Those are your two choices. <laughs> <laughs> so... He, uh, he's been really critical of the Fed, and I thought that he had some interesting comments. So he said that corporate profits uh, – uh, he said that he's been wrong so far because he and some other people have been calling for profits to fall because of high interest rates, and it hasn't. But he said that corporate profits could still fall by 20 to 30 percent and that the value of cur- commercial real estate will tumble, which is something that we're starting to see. Uh He's also said that he's observed anecdotal evidence that on the margin, things are getting softer as pandemic stimulus is running down rapidly. And historically, the simultaneous increases in interest rates, oil, and the dollar have been negative for the economy. Notice I say the economy. I'm noticing. So, like I said, his call for a recession hasn't panned out because a lot of corporations and households are shielded from these higher interest rates as they locked in lower borrowing costs in previous years. But as they move to refinance in the next couple of years, he said you have to be open-minded about something breaking. So what did he do? If you think that the economy is going to flounder, that doesn't necessarily mean that the stock market is going to take a shit. But 
it could more likely affect the bond market. So he bought a bunch of two-year dated bonds that are currently low, so he thinks that they're going to go up. Mm -hmm. Bonds are inversely correlated. So when a bond goes up, the yield on the bond drops and vice versa. So if a, if a bond is dropping, the yield on it is going up. So lately, bonds have just been shitting the bed, and their yields are going up because the lower they go, it's like, if I'm a buyer, hey, well, entice me, bitch. Give me a good interest rate, and maybe I'll buy some. Entice me, bitch. Entice me, bitch. And so he bought a bunch of two-year bonds. He said, Jerome Powell talks a good game, but let's see what kind of game he's talking about when the unemployment rate is 4.5% and going higher because currently it's 3.8%. So if he's right about the economy, Stan Druckenmiller says that two-year yields could fall to 3%, while 10- and 30-year yields remain at the current levels, meaning the yield curve is going to normalize, meaning the, the further-dated bonds have the higher interest rates and the shorter-dated bonds have the lower interest rates, which is what you want to see. Um, and he said that it's a, it's a trade he expects to have for some time. He thinks that um, basically... Jerome Powell, what he's saying about the unemployment rate, <coughs> excuse me, what he's saying about the unemployment rate is that what's Jerome Powell going to do when the unemployment rate starts to go up and continue to go up? He's going to have to cut interest rates. And when he cuts interest rates, that's going to cause these bonds that he bought to go up because their rates are going to go down. So do I think it'll happen? I don't know. Is he right? I don't know. Anecdotally also, you got Apple saying that they're not going to return to growth despite the holiday quarter coming up. But then also you Are had you going to make any moves with this uh with with this Druckenmiller info? No. Probably not. Okay. Also uh yeah, so Apple sales are down, but you got like Starbucks earnings are up. You know why? Shopify earnings are up. Why? Because they saw that picture of Ben Affleck holding a Starbucks cup and not a Dunkin' cup and people went nut nut over it. Dude, that's big news. That is big news. When the king of Boston is not holding a Dunkin' Cup, but a Starbucks cup. I remember reading somewhere things that- Things are looking up. They're essentially like a bank, Starbucks, because they got all this money just chilling in, in their unused gift cards. And they're like an unregulated bank in that sense. Hundreds of millions of dollars just chilling there. In unused gift cards. Yeah, because you load up your gift card to use your- if, But why would that make them like a bank? Well, because they got all these cash reserves. Because when you buy the thing, it's just cash that Starbucks now has. Yeah, but it's w wouldn't it be the same as just buying products at, at Starbucks? You already gave them the cash. I don't know. I think it's it's akin to... But what's the difference if I buy... If I trade it in later? I think because you then use that cash... To get product. Yes. So it's like they're holding it for you, kind of. I doubt they're holding it. I doubt they're holding it, too. <laughs> uh, the other big news that I saw was that um, Celsius, you know Celsius, the drink? I'm aware. That everybody fucking loves? They announced a stock split, a three-for-one split, effective November 15th for holders as of November 13th. So if you like your Celsius stock, hold on to it, because you're about to get three more shares for every one that you've got, but then the price is going to drop in kind. You know how much Celsius was per share in 2020, three years ago? Five dollars. Mm. Now, now 177. About to be about to be a third of that. A third of that. Do Nobody, the math at home for yeah, do for, the math. for for our astute uh, listeners. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that math. I'm just not going to do it. I would say it's about f like $57, no, probably more. $60? Yeah, it's a little bit over. It's a little bit over that, yeah. How quickly did I do that? Time me. Pretty fast. That was pretty impressive. So, yeah, they're doing that. I saw that Moderna lost a money I lost a ton, like billions of dollars on vaccines because like nobody wants vaccines anymore. It's like who cares? And their stock has been cut by like two thirds. I'm on my I'm on my eighth booster. I'm boosted to the fucking gills. I'm doing it. I'm putting Moderna on my back. mRNA. I wonder if they're gonna have any luck with their cancer vaccine because they're working on that shit. I well, hope that they succeed. If it works as well as the COVID vaccine, I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else is there? I think that's about it, man. I think that's it. You didn't want to tell them about WeWork uh, filing for yeah, bankruptcy? Yeah, WeWork filed for bankruptcy. Fuck them. A little... Uh, we don't work. We we bankrupt. <laughs> just in time for Mark Andreessen to... Um, that guy's a fucking moron. Mark Andreessen? He went on Joe Rogan and... 
there's a clip of him talking about, hey, you know when they show you those old videos of uh, of the nuclear blast tests? This is what Joe Rogan said to No, this is what Mark Andreessen said to Joe Rogan. Why? And I don't know. They were on the subject <laughs> for some reason. And then Mark Andreessen like blows Joe Rogan's mind by going, "How did they uh how did they film that? Huh? Where where uh, how did the film not get radiated like in, in, in hinting that it was some kind of conspiracy theory and Joe Rogan goes, "You motherfucker." Like it immediately tricks Joe Rogan. And it's like, "Yeah, they fucking they they had them in cement sarcophaguses, sarcophagi, and they were they used like sarcophagi? lead, lead lined, yeah, film or whatever. It's, oh, Jesus, these people, man. They yeah, just, maybe maybe stick to talking about apes, brother. They all just have brain worms. <clears throat> I'm jealous. I want them worms. You know, man. you know the you know the thing where they. Uh, well, I'll just do it to you. What? So like a a father and son are are. Um, they're driving in the car. They get in a car accident. Mm, mm. The father's a doctor. The the and the dad dies in the car accident, and they rush the son to the hospital. Okay. And when they get there, the doctor says, "I can't operate on 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 this boy. This boy, that's my son. How's that possible?" Man, I don't know. Dude. Just how's it possible? Just think I don't about know. it. There, there was a, the the doctor that died in the car accident was a different person in the other car. The kid was. I don't. Right, know. right. So this is the point. What you 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 pr- you showed the point is that I said the f- the father was a doctor, mm-hmm. and you said how could it be possible? And what a lot of people miss is that it could be the boy's mother who is also a doctor. Uh. But in people's brains, they go, "Women aren't doctors." <clears throat> but it's very funny because now there's a now there's a funny woke version of it is that people go he has two gay dads <laughs> <laughs> gay dads can be doctors dude. but but, but uh, so people are like his other dad is the doctor oh yeah okay we salute you gay dad doctor we, su- we salute all our gay dad doctors out there. Well, folks, I think that just about does it for this episode. Do you, I, though? Yeah, I do. I got a piece so bad. How? How? I'll tell you how. This empty bottle of Jesus, Diet Coke is you really is how. put it down. Uh, so join us in the bonus. Paypigs.com. Sl- We've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Patreon.com slash pod. And uh, we're going to talk about... You'll see. Can I tell you about, can I tell you about D&D? Yeah, we're going to talk oh, about fucking ben. D&D. <laughs> Look how pissed he is. <laughs> we're going to talk about D&D. We're going to talk about... Uh, can I tell you about... Um, New York City? Some other stuff. We're going to talk about New York City. We're going to talk about all sorts of stuff. Can I tell... Oh, you want to talk about the new Speaker of the House. You love him. You're obsessed Yeah, we're going to talk about the new Speaker of the House. It's a Bose speaker. <laughs> anyway, so long, everybody. Bye. <laughs>